Okay, so this week I ran out of ideas, so I decided I'd make a video about my application to Princeton and some of the things that I guess got me into Princeton. When I was applying, this is the sort of video that I was looking for, and I decided, you know, since I got into Princeton, why not share my experiences and my stats and extracurriculars and stuff. I'm aware that there are a lot of videos out there, but I just wanted to throw mine out into the world of YouTube. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Kyle and I'm a current sophomore, or I should say a rising sophomore at Princeton University and I'm majoring in mechanical and aerospace engineering. I try to upload every Tuesday, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. I usually post videos of myself making things. Um, I'm currently working on a 3D printed clock. So if you're into this kind of stuff, engineering, etc., subscribe if you're interested. It really helps grow the channel and get my message out to other students in similar situations. Now, a couple disclaimers before I start. I'm not an expert. If I were to apply with the exact same application, exact same extracurriculars, uh, scores and stuff, there's no way I would know whether or not I would get into Princeton um, if I applied next year, because every year their quota for a certain demographic or a certain uh, type of student might change. I even heard Princeton brag about how they were working to accept students from all 50 states in the US. It shows that y even your state of residence has a huge impact on your chances of getting in. Okay, so things to note before we start. Since middle school, I knew I wanted to major in mechanical engineering, and this had a pretty huge impact on the sorts of extracurriculars that I pursued, the classes that I took, uh, the subject tests that I took, um, and ultimately the schools that I applied to. Also, I went to a school called Bergen County Academies in New Jersey, and it's a public magnet high school. It's a technical school. And I was in their academy for engineering and design technology. Now, as far as test scores go, I took both the SAT and ACT, but I decided to only report my ACT scores because they were ultimately better. Now, in March 2018, I took the SAT, I got a 1460, I got 670 on the reading and writing, and 790 on math, and on the essay I got a 15 out of 24. Now I took the ACT twice, I took it once in April 2018, which I got a 33, 35, 34, 31 on, uh, and on the essay I got an 8, 3 months later in July of 2018. I got a 36 composite, 36 is across the board, and I got a 8 out of 12 on the essay. Now this essay score lowered my overall ELA score down to a 31, even though I got a 36 on both the reading and writing. But overall, I think it just goes to show that your um, essay score doesn't really matter that much, but you should still take the essay. Now the PSAT, um, I got a 1420 during my sophomore year, on a like a practice unofficial PSAT and a 1450 during my junior year and I did get a national merit commended student uh, status or something which wasn't as impressive as you know a merit semi-finalist or finalist uh, but I still put it on my awards uh, section of my common app regardless. Now as far as subject tests go as I mentioned before I knew I wanted to uh, go to a tech school or at least major in, in engineering. Um, so I took math 2 at the end of my sophomore year and I got an 800 on that. During my junior year I knew I had to take two more subject tests to fulfill many of the uh, requirements. In May of my junior year I took physics and chem. I got a 750 on physics and 790 on chem. And in June I took them again and I got an 800 on physics and 790 on chem. Now my overall GPA in high school was around a 3.9 unweighted. I don't really remember the exact number but it was like 3.98, but who, who really cares about that? 
Um, all I remember is that when I applied to colleges, my transcript was all A's and A minuses um, from freshman through junior year. And overall, during my entire high school career, the lowest grade that I got and the only B that I got was in multivariable calculus during my senior year because senioritis. Now with high school and AP classes, your mileage may vary. Um, I personally know students who have taken APs throughout freshman and sophomore year, but I personally didn't take any until my junior year. My schedule tended to be a little more limiting than other students because I had um, engineering electives and technical requirements that I had um, as an engineering student, um, so I wasn't able to take as many AP classes as other people at other schools. In junior year, I took two APs, AP Calc BC and Comp Sci, both of which I got fives on. And during my senior year, um, I put these on my application, but I didn't have the test scores yet. Um, I took Physics C, um, I got fives on both e and and Mechanics, um, AP Gov, which I got a four on, and AP Music Theory, which I got a five on. My takeaways from this would be that Ivy Leagues look for students who like to challenge themselves. Um, they look for students who can handle the academic rigor of the typical of a typical Ivy League school. Um, and AP courses are a great way to show that you're ready for college uh, level material. Extracurriculars were a big part of my application, as I'm sure they are with, with everyone's. Um, also played a huge role in my admission to Princeton, I think. My main extracurricular was ballet, and I was a pre-professional student at Ballet Academy East. Um, starting in eighth grade, I, I would leave school early. I would leave school about an hour early to commute to New York City every weekday and Saturdays, so six times a week. Um, this was about a 21 hour per week time commitment for me throughout my four years of high school. And this is definitely something that I took the most time and energy out of my life to do. Um, now, you may be thinking, like, why uh, do this when you want to go into engineering? And it was my passion. I enjoyed dancing. Also, this is what I decided to write my Common App essay about and a bunch of my supplemental essays. Now, as far as my engineering um, extracurriculars go, I never really had the time to join um, any sort of club after school that was school affiliated because I was training in dance after school every day. So really the only way I could um, sort of pursue my passion of engineering was to sort of do things on my own, pursue my own personal projects, etc. Um, sort of like what I'm doing with my clock right now. but. Um, back in high school, what I did was I designed and 3D printed my own custom drone parts. I was also lucky enough to be able to join a research lab, a mechatronics research lab at my school. Um, throughout sophomore, junior year, I um, conducted research and basically taught myself how to do image processing on a Raspberry Pi. I made a smart traffic light uh, that would sort of detect the amount of cars in each lane and change the light based on that. I'm a huge believer in self-teaching and sort of exploring things on your own because that's how I was able to gain so many skills in 3D printing and 3D modeling. I don't want to take credit away from my school's curriculum in which I learned how to use uh, basic CAD programs and stuff, but much of my growth and exploration as an engineer came from just downloading the software onto my own laptop and exploring on my own time. Also this is sort of a side thing, uh, but ever since I was a kid I've been folding origami and this is something that I felt was both I guess sort of a fusion between art and math slash engineering. Didn't really mention this throughout my common app essays or anything, but I did 
um, submit a origami portfolio to a couple of colleges that accepted these sorts of art portfolios. I believe I sent them to Princeton and MIT. Hey guys, future me talking here. I forgot to include one pretty important part of my application, which is my senior internship. So as a part of my school's curriculum um, during senior year, instead of going to class on Wednesdays, every senior was required to um, go one day a week to an internship, um, sort of like a shadowing, sort of unpaid mentorship throughout the entire year. It was a way for us to learn how to make cover letters, how to reach out to potential employers, how to make a resume, and sort of present ourselves in a professional manner. And I knew that the seniors had done this senior internship program at this company, at this medical orthopedic company called Stryker. Uh, I just sent them my resume and cover letter and was lucky enough to be selected as the only student to intern there for the year. The team that I worked within specified in ankle replacements, which was of particular interest to me since as a dancer, I had gone through multiple ankle injuries. Uh, I used an industry standard CAD modeling package called PTC Creo in order to model the various instruments and devices that were needed in order for uh, this particular ankle replacement surgery that was being developed by Stryker. Uh, personally, I didn't really mention this too much throughout my application because I started it in September of my senior year and by December, by the time I was applying to colleges, I still didn't really have much under my belt. It sort of still felt like things were just ramping up in my internship, so I didn't talk too much about it, although I put it down just because I knew it would be important to include. So my main takeaway for extracurriculars I guess would be to choose one or two things that you're really passionate about and uh, do them at an extremely high level. Ivy League schools love to see individuals who are committed and driven and self-motivated to do these things on their own and to explore things that they would normally not be able to do um, in school, etc. <laughs> Now, as much as I like to talk about my success with Princeton, um, I don't normally talk about my rejections. And I find that a lot of people out on YouTube also don't really talk about um, what it feels like to get rejected from places that you uh, really wanted to go. And I think this is the one thing that I felt was missing from a lot of the YouTube videos that I've um, watched throughout my high school career. Yes, I got into Princeton, but I was also rejected from many, many other schools. I got into about half of the colleges that I applied to, and amongst those rejections were Columbia, MIT, Caltech, Georgia Tech, and UPenn. And you may be wondering, you know, how did you get into Princeton but not into UPenn or Columbia or, uh, you know, Georgia Tech because they're ranked so much lower than Princeton? And the answer I can give to that would be I really don't know. The college application process is really a crapshoot. As I like to think, everything happens for a reason. Part of me likes to think that the college admission boards of the schools that I got rejected to knew that this sort of school wasn't the right place for me or wasn't, wouldn't be the right fit. For example, at MIT, I used my uh, Common App essay, which was, for, uh, which was about ballet. Um, and I think in hindsight, they may have thought that I was too focused on the arts instead of tech while I was still you know, really willing to put in the work and excel at a tech school like MIT. Um, and the more I think about it, the more I realize um, how everything really worked out in the end. I'm extremely happy at Princeton. I'm also really fortunate and blessed to have access to amazing liberal arts courses, um, and dance most of all because dance is a passion of mine and I really wanted to continue it in college um, and I'm able to do so at a high level at Princeton.
Now, rejection doesn't mean that you are a failure. Please know this because I know it's really easy to let rejection get up all in your head and make you feel like you are a failure, but in reality, you're not. Even if you don't get into your dream school, maybe you'll realize that it probably was for the best. Maybe you'll realize that later on, it happened for a reason. Please don't get discouraged, uh, either from my stats or from your rejection from colleges, because it will happen. I personally was rejected from, you know, seven, eight schools before I opened my Princeton acceptance letter, and you can probably imagine how dejected and how discouraged I was feeling until I opened my Princeton letter. But my main takeaway for you guys is to take every decision, every acceptance, every rejection with a grain of salt because it does not define who you are as a person. Please know this and remember this as you apply to colleges, whether you're a freshman or a junior in the middle of all this stuff going on. Uh, please, everything happens for a reason. I hope this was helpful and I really hope you all with the best um, in your college journeys. If you want to hear more about any of the things that I talked about, or if I missed something completely in this video, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please smash the like button gently and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.